Good morning everyone and happy Tuesday. I'm here because this month is Walk Your Pet Month and I'm doing a mini challenge for anyone that wants to do it, which I mentioned on the last video. If you want to walk your pet every day and film one to three seconds and put it all together in a compilation video at the end of the month, um, anyone who does so gets a surprise from me. I know it's been really cold. Um, Kaya did not get out Thursday or Friday because it was way too cold. She does go out with a in a group dog walk on Wednesdays, so I won't have film for that either. But I have every other day so far. So even if it just put them on a leash and walk them around the house, if that's all you have time for. But I'm going to talk about how much time they're supposed to get, why people typically don't walk their pets, and what to do if you're struggling to reach the minimum requested amount of exercise. I'm going to talk about dogs, cats, and horses just because I typically don't have a lot of information on horses but I did a little extra research this time to get the rest of the information for you guys. So again, I don't know I've talked about this before for walk your dog day and things like that and walk your dog week, I think there's three. Um, the general rule for dogs is at least 15 minutes twice a day, whether it's morning and evening or before lunch and evening or whatever, um, which is about 30 minutes. But working breeds, hunting breeds, and herding breeds need more exercise than other dogs, which means Kaya, who's an Australian Shepherd, is a herding breed, meaning she needs lots of exercise, and I can hike her for four hours come back, she'll rest for an hour and she's ready to go again. But 30 minutes to two hours is a pretty big window. And if you have a dog that has a job, say it's a, excuse me, an agility dog, or it's a dock diving dog, or something like that, then they do also need more exercise. But you also have to consider that they need longer rest periods because they have to make up for that. A really disgusting fact, <clears throat> on one side it said one number and on another side it said another number, so I'm going to give you both. 30 to 60% of dog owners do not walk their dogs on a semi-regular basis. 30 to 60%. The other side said 40%, which is a little more concentrated. But the dogs that get walked the least are dogs under 30 pounds because they think they're small, they can run around, they'll be fine. Older dogs because they're senile and their dog can't make it very far, but that doesn't mean that they don't need the exercise unless they've had an injury or something like that. If you have a dog with arthritis and you want to talk to me about cold laser therapy or nutritional supplements that help with arthritis, I'm always here to talk about that. The third category is obese dogs which are probably the ones that need the exercise the most. If you have a dog that's obese, there are a lot of alternative options and you're welcome to ask me about them at any time. They did a couple of studies. Most of these studies were in Britain because there is a law in Britain that all registered dog owners must walk their dog 30 to 40 minutes a day minimum, which I think is amazing but I have no idea how they keep track of how long everybody walks their dog. But I guess they would just complain if they saw their neighbor never walk their dog. I'm not sure. But anyway, they did studies and found that the people who walk their dogs the most were the ones that had the strongest bonds with their dog. Meaning if you don't spend a lot of time with your dog or your dog's a family dog, meaning everyone gets access to the dog, then there's not not as much of a bond, but it's dispersed between more people. Dogs typically have a favorite. There's a lot of dogs that have their person and then they like everyone else, but if they're hurt or sad, they'll always go to that one person. These dogs get walked the most. It's more common for dogs to get walked if the owner understands the primary motivation for being walked. I'm not talking about exercise. I'm not talking about strengthening your bond. I'm talking about 
happiness. We feel good when we're out there walking our dogs because we know not that we're doing something we should do, but we're doing something that feels good. Because whenever I go out walking with Kaya, I'm always smiling, even if it's really cold, because I know how much it means to me to be out with her. Because as a kid, I've wanted a dog since as soon as I knew what a dog was. And I always used to be jealous of other people walking their dogs because I never had one. Now when I go out, I say, oh, I get to walk my dog. And it's, to me, that's such a huge deal. But it's also happiness for the dog because they get time outside their territory. They get sniff walks, obedience walks. They get to get their beans out. Um, because a lot of times that's really handy in working on obedience because this month is also educate, no, dog training month, that, <laughs> which I'm going to talk about next week. If you're struggling to get to the minimum 30, 45 minutes a day, you can add mental exercises. It's a little bit of obedience training, so if you reach the road, get your dog to stop and sit and wait, look both ways exaggerating, and then cross the road. Or say when they're getting too far ahead of you, you can get them to heal. That one took a little bit of effort with Kaya, but she is a herding dog, so she is quite good at coming back when she wants. So that's dogs. Cats, there wasn't a whole lot about walking cats just because a lot of people don't, which is fair. Most cats are smaller than dogs and they have more room to run around because they're not as big. So they're less likely to run, th knock things over or run into things. The cats that are most likely to go out for walks are the partially wild breeds. And I didn't write down the names of them, but the Bengal is one of them. The Chowsey is one of them. And the Savannah cat is another one. So if your dog is dis or sorry cat is descended from wild cats, they're more likely to want to go outside on the walk. So it's something you can consider if you do have one of those breeds. If not, most cats love climbing. An easy way to get them more exercise is to build vertical exercise spaces. So a cat tree, I have a friend who built a cat highway in her apartment, meaning attached floating shelves and put carpet on the top so her cats can go over doorways and things like that. But just making sure they get enough exercise because I'm sure you would much rather them climb up on the cat tree rather than your furniture. So that's something else to think about. But cats do sleep 60% of their lives and they don't move around as much, but it doesn't mean they don't like exercise. Everybody likes I was going to say, everybody likes exercise. Everybody likes the feeling of exercise, but not necessarily doing it. On to horses. Um, a lot of sites said different things depending on what the horse did and the riding style of the owner of the horse. But they say four times a week minimum for most horses, depending again on age, at activity level, meaning if they do sports or not, to every single day. Now, sometimes it doesn't have to be an intense, you know, one hour, hour and a half ride. It can be lunge line. It can be going for a trek in the forest. It can be, I don't know, working on specific exercises. It can be switching riders so that the horse gets told the correct way to do something by more than one person. And they'll be faster to pick it up. Again, if the rider's at a different level than you and they're riding your horse, make sure that you communicate what you want that person to tell your horse. Otherwise, the training will actually go much, much slower. That's something else to consider. For horses, I actually read something about some horses like being exercised a lot and some horses don't. If you have a horse that likes being exercised a lot, keep an eye on their behavior because some horses, when you go to get them out of the pasture, they'll be less inclined to come in when they're overworked. There's someone that said you can't overwork a horse, which I think you can. If you work them, you know, four hours a day, that's a bit much. But 
read your horse's behavior. If they look sad when you go to bring them into pasture, not at mealtime, but just bring them in to work on them, then you know that they're tired and they don't want to work as much. So maybe just stretch their muscles, bring them in, stretch them, give them a little bit of food, and then put them back out. But learning your pet's behavior is very, very important for this because if I ask Kaya if she wants to go for a WALK, I have never, ever seen her not get excited. Meaning I could take her out as many times a day as I could and she would still go. But at some point, which when I go away and I send her to camp, she goes to uh, dogs at camp in Uxbridge, she typically goes for say five, six days. And she comes back and she sleeps for four days after because she runs all day, every day. They have to bring her in to give her food and make sure she has her little breaks and then send her back out. So she sleeps for four days. So when she goes for six and sleeps for four, that's 10 days of quiet that I get, which is really nice because it takes a lot to tire her out. And I totally understand that the camp is necessary at some times to tire her out, but she's gonna get to go there for a week in May and a week in June. So she'll have a good time there. Hello to whoever joined me, just popped on right at the end, but that's okay. Um, that's all I have to say for today. But if you have any questions or concerns, you're welcome to email me anytime. I'm still doing the walk your pet challenge, which has been challenging <laughs> because of all the snow and the cold, but one step at a time. I will see you next Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hello to whoever popped on. I will see you next Tuesday.